Today we are looking at the 2023 Subaru Outback touchscreen and how the controls work. So this will be a basic overview for anybody who just recently bought a new Outback or if you are somebody who is looking to buy a new Outback here in the near future. Although we are looking at a 2023 Outback touchscreen, this information is applicable for the most part to 2020 and newer because that is whenever Subaru came out with this 11.6 inch touchscreen display. This is essentially like a smartphone or a tablet. You have your apps here and you have a few basic controls with a home button. So this right here always takes you back to your home screen. So say you click into an app, it's always gonna take you back to the home screen. And you'll notice there are a few things, this bottom section of the screen, that always stay here in this position no matter what app you click on. Same is true for the top. So there's really three different sections you have the display up at the top, you have the main screen here in the center whenever you click on your apps, and then you have some of your climate controls and some of your car controls down at the bottom that you can always easily get to no matter where you are at, no matter what menu you're in. So we're gonna click the home button here and go back to the main screen. Starting out, we have our climate controls at the very bottom. You have an on off switch for your climate controls. And then new for 23, they did add these one touch heated seat controls. So if you have anything but a base model, you'll have heated seats on your Outback. If you have a Touring, you'll have cooling seats, and so you'll have two switches here, one for heat and one for the cooling ventilated seats. So it's high, medium, low, and off. That's how those work. And then you have one on the passenger side as well that can easily be activated. I'm gonna turn mine back down to low here. Here's your fan speed controls. You have the AC button. And if you click anywhere in this giant rectangle right here, where it says high on the left and high on the right, you can tap anywhere on here and that will open or close this menu. Now it looks like there's a lot on this, but it's really simple. You have your temperature controls. You can tap just like this. And the left side is for the driver's side. The right side is for the passenger side, the front passenger. The center button here, sync, it's dual climate, so it syncs up. So if I wanna adjust my temperature here, but then I wanna just quickly sync it up to where the passenger is the exact same. You just click that button just like that. You can also use your physical controls here on the left or the right. You'll notice when you use your passenger controls it automatically unsyncs the two. Sync them back up here. Right now the vent position is on feet, but if I wanna put it on defrost and feet, I can put it right there. If I wanna put it on face and feet right there, this is face and feet, but it prioritizes face vents. And then this is just the face vents. At the top, we have auto, which is going to automatically adjust the fan speed according to whatever temperature I set. We have the recirculation, which is gonna recirculate our cabin air, the AC button, and then max AC, which as we see, turns the fan speed all the way up and turns the temperature all the way down, which we do not want right now because it's 37 degrees out right now. And then to click out of this, you can click either right here on this rectangle or you can click the top right X. I think it's easier while I'm driving just to click right here. On the bottom left, we have our car controls. So we click on the little circle car icon. We've got our vehicle controls right here. This is gonna be where you adjust your main vehicle controls, things that you may adjust daily depending on where you're driving. The top one, vehicle dynamics control, that is your traction control. X mode, I've talked about this in a lot of videos, but this adjusts your all-wheel drive system to work with your traction control to prioritize traction. So deep snow is gonna be if you're stuck in a rut or in deep snow, and then snow dirt, might be more useful for drier situations. Maybe you're on a gravel driveway and your, your wheels are spinning. So if you ever find yourself in a situation where you've lost traction, as long as you are not at high speeds, I believe it's 25 miles an hour or less on the Outback, you can use this X mode. Cruise control acceleration, this changes your adaptive cruise control. So I'm gonna move the camera over here and show you this real quick. So if you never heard of adaptive cruise control, here is a simple example. Here's your on off switch for your cruise control. Whenever I turn it on, you'll see the little car icon. And in regular cruise, whenever you set your speed, if somebody comes in front of you and slows down, you have to turn your cruise control off. Well, with adaptive cruise control, we have 
these up and down arrows to change the distance at which our car will automatically brake and pace behind the car in front of us. So I'll go ahead and get this in focus again up on the screen here so you can see. So you see lines increase. That increases the distance. If we click it down, that decreases the distance. Whenever you click this down and set your cruise control, your car is going to pace behind the car in front of you. Well, let's say we set it at 60 miles an hour down the highway and the car in front of us goes out of the way. So once that car is in the other lane and out of the way, if it slowed us down, our car is going to begin to accelerate back up to the speed that we originally set. And this is where this cruise control acceleration setting comes into play. If you want it to gradually accelerate, so you don't want it to accelerate very quick, you'd put it in eco. If you want it to accelerate as quickly as possible, you put it in dynamic. Or if you want to adjust the settings to accelerate somewhere in between, you would click comfort or standard. The next setting we have is auto vehicle hold. Here's the on off switch for it right here. So whenever you toggle it on, you'll notice that AVH lights up green over here on your display. And whenever you put it into gear, as long as you have your foot completely on the brake, you'll see that the AVH light starts flashing. This is holding the electronic brake for me so I can relax my foot. So it's very useful in stop and go traffic or if you're waiting for a red light or, or tra a train to pass or any situation where you've had to sit for an extended period of time, but you don't wanna have to put your car into park. Below that, we have steering responsive headlights. The headlights turn as you are driving, as you are steering. So you can turn that on and off. And just below that, we have the auto start stop setting. If you're unfamiliar with what this does, it shuts the engine off at complete stops to save on fuel. So you have to be at a complete stop and in gear for that to work. It does default on. There's quite a few people who don't like that. And Subaru does give you a quick way to turn it off right here. So no matter what screen you're on, you can be on the main screen here. There's always an on off. So that defaults on each time you restart your engine. But if you wanna turn it off, you just simply tap it right there and it turns it off for the entirety of your trip. But whenever you manually restart your car, that will be back on. Under driving assistance, we just have a few options here. Pre-collision braking, you can turn that on and off. That works with your eyesight cameras that are up in the windshield. So these are the cameras right here. You've got one on the left and one on the right. Those detect objects up front. And if you wanted to Turn that system off for whatever reason you could right there lane departure you can see i've got mine turned off but there's a couple settings you can adjust in here and it's a little bit confusing if you're not familiar with it so all settings is going to turn on both the audible alert and the physical steering system that'll keep you centered in your lane when lane markings are present so those same cameras up there that control your auto braking also look for lane markings and will use the power steering to keep you centered the important thing to know is even when that's on, you still have full control of the car, so it's not driving for you, it's just there to help. You can adjust this to just have the lane departure prevention or just have the buzzer. You can turn both of them off. Or if you like the, you don't like the buzzer, but say you like the lane departure prevention, so sometimes when I'm traveling, I'll turn just that on, that is helpful. Another important thing to be aware of is that Whenever this is turned off, you still have the ability to use your lane centering intermittently with your adaptive cruise control. So whenever your adaptive cruise control is turned on and you tap this button right here to the bottom right, you'll see the steering wheel icon will light up on the dash and say ready. That is your lane centering as well, but that lane centering is only active when your adaptive cruise control is turned on. And the lane centering over here is if you want to use that even with adaptive cruise turned off. So I get questions on that all the time, and that is the difference between the two. And the last vehicle setting here is the blind spot detection and rear cross traffic alert, which does two things. One, if we turn this off and turn it right back on, I'll show you what it looks like. But the mirrors light up orange when somebody is in our blind spot, both on the left and the right. The rear cross traffic alert works when you're in reverse, it will detect cars or people walking by in the cross traffic if you're backing out somewhere so you can see them. So this happens all the time whenever I'm backing out of my driveway and a car is coming this way, but I don't see them from over here right away or somebody's walking on the sidewalk. So it just helps in those uh, split seconds where maybe you would have accidentally ran into somebody if you hadn't seen them. More settings doesn't have a whole lot on it. 
just the ability to change your warning volume. So if you want to increase or decrease that sound and then the units, depending on where you live, you can change that. That covers it for all of your vehicle settings, which again, if you click the little car icon, it's gonna take you to all of your main car settings to adjust any of the safety controls or anything that you might want to customize. On the bottom right, we don't have to click the home screen, but I'm gonna click out of it just to show you. On the bottom right, we have our phone connection. So you'll see all of your devices that are connected here. Right now, my phone's not in there because I'm filming on my phone and I don't want it to lag. So I just have Chelsea's phone connected right now, but here's how you add a phone. You click add, go to your settings on your phone and click on Bluetooth and look for the device name Outback. That's how you can connect your phone to your car. I made a video on the benefits and the uses of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You can click on the YouTube card up to the right to find out more details on that. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comment section below. And then to the bottom right, we have our driver profiles. What you can do with driver profiles is set specific settings like your, your temperature preferences, your phone preferences, so which phone is connected through the Bluetooth or CarPlay, as well as radio settings, all from the profile setting here. This is what your radio looks like. So all I did to get to it was top left, click on radio. If your car has navigation, that top left is gonna have the TomTom Tom navigation icon. My car does not have nav. I use navigation through Apple CarPlay. So again, that's one main benefit of having that. And it comes standard on all cars, no matter if you have a base trim or higher. Here's how easy it is to operate your radio. You have your AM, FM, and Sirius XM. Uh, I don't have the Sirius XM subscription, so that's why it says preview right here. You can save your favorite channels. I actually haven't gone in here and saved any, so these are just random ones. But this is how you click and hold to save a channel. And you can, you can also override any of the ones that maybe you want to change to. So you can always change these to whatever your favorite settings are, or whatever your favorite channels are, and you can do up to 18. So they give you quite a few tiles here to save favorites to. Media is going to show any devices that are connected, whether it's through Bluetooth, through the USB input down below in front of the shift lever, or if you have an iPod or an iPhone connected through your auxiliary or, or otherwise. If you have a CD player, this will display up there. I don't have a CD player in my Outback, not many of them do, only the touring trim level comes standard, but you can get that as an optional package if you really prefer to have CDs. Phone is another way that you can add your Bluetooth devices. So it's the same thing as this down here. You can just click on phone to add a Bluetooth device. Under apps, you have your Starlink, which is not connected right now because my phone's not connected. The Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The next one is Travel Link. This will display information about the weather, your local weather, fuel prices, sports, stocks, and parking information if you have the SiriusXM subscription. I don't have the SiriusXM subscription. If you're curious why I don't, it's because I don't really care to have all this information. And also, I use Spotify for my music and YouTube to listen to videos and podcasts, so I don't have a need for this, at least not enough to pay for it. So I just don't have it. I'll let the, uh, the subscription expire. And then the last app here is the My Subaru app, which is also located on the main screen here. So if you click that, you can make an appointment. You can schedule roadside assistance. You do have to have the Subaru Starlink subscription to do this. I did five years of it for the ability to have remote start from my phone, as well as have these conveniences here. And then lastly, we've got the car info. So under maintenance, this is super helpful. You can keep track of all your maintenance schedules. On a new Subaru, you wanna get your oil changed every six months or 6,000 miles with full synthetic oil. So you can keep track of all that here. You can set it up to automatically remind you through your My Subaru app, or you can manually adjust it here to put in specific dates or amount of miles for when you want to get your oil changed or your filter or tire rotations done. You can also click this reset button and it clears everything out and sets it back to zero. So that should help get you guys started with your new Outback's touchscreen display. If you guys have questions, 
As always, leave those down in the comment section below. If you found this video helpful today and you got value out of it, please be sure to remember to click the like button. Hope you guys have a great day and I will see you in the next one.